separated service line and roof. Well, the same two causes are often the cause of a problem with the water line. My neighbor had a separated water line actually twice in the past two summers, and the city can go out there and help her out with it. They had to hire someone to do it. Whereas with the sewer, for some reason, we go out there and do it. It's a long-standing practice. Anyway, next slide, please. Currently, we have uh, two, two different service times. We have normal business hours, and that's from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Again, that was the fees I just mentioned a few moments ago. Remember, this slide is normal business hours. Okay. After hours, uh, holidays, nights, and weekends, uh, again, this is what the cost is if we run that in October, in, sorry, October 1st, and based on the budget uh, direction, August, we raised that fee from $100 to $140. Next slide. Emergency cleaning. Basically, it's some recent data. 690 cleanings in the last in six, 
believe it was the first six months of 2011. And again, 40% were on private stoppages between the house and the, uh, I'm sorry, 40% of those were between the property line and the main, and 60% of those stoppages were uh, between the house and the right away line. Most people uh, generally, to go back to, when you go back to look at those fees, they'll wait to the uh, Monday to Friday, uh, 7 to 10, before they'll call us. And that creates some problems, especially on the weekend. They have stoppage on the weekend. Basically, go outside, unscrew the uh, CI cap, let it run on the ground, then that's a violation of the sanitary sewer overflow requirements, uh, which we can be penalized for. We can be cited for that. Uh, Does that alleviate the problem? For them, it alleviates the immediate <laughs> problem. Yes, for the house, for the house. For the yard. <laughs> First the neighbors. But it doesn't yeah. always do it. Quality of life. It doesn't life. always do it, but if it releases it at that point, we know that stoppage is somewhere between that clean out and main. Uh, basically, uh, we received complaints from local plumbers in the past. And Periodically, we'll, we'll hear a farmer say that why are you in our business uh, taking business away from us as far as cleaning and maintaining a sanitary sewer line on private property. The city does not perform, uh, again, the maintenance on the private property uh, other than emergency cleaning activities. We do not prepare the line, but we do go in and uh, clear that stoppage. There has not been too many activities where we've gone in to clean a line and actually damaged a, a person's line. We've not run the uh, high pressure holes through the side wall of a private sewer line between the house and the main. But we have blown it out through the roof. We have blown it, uh, toilet it's off, and then we have different things. So again, going to the next bullet, we have the liability of damage to the homes. Uh, and it's not a pretty sight, nor is the customer really uh, happy with us at that point in time. Insurance companies do not generally cover that aspect of uh, repairs, so there's always a question uh, back to us in a claim form, uh, and then that goes to email mail for review. And denial. And denial. Which then creates a problem because it basically caused damage. What this also does, uh, per federal rule and state rule, we are to do mainline cleaning on sewer lines to prevent those sanitary sewer overflows. When we're maintaining or we're performing private line sewers, that means our crew are not out doing what they need to be doing with cleaning. Um, probably, I think we've got about 350 miles of sewer lines in the city. so. Uh, again, this is one issue that we, we concentrate on is trying to maintain those lines and prevent overflows in our lines. Estimated expense in 2011 was for this service was about $88,000. The claims in 2010, prior year, uh, I believe we had one claim close to $5,000 that uh, we were. Right before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, to give you a little side story, I do remember we cleaned flushing one operation and we thought we cleared the line and actually we built a swimming pool uh, full of some sewers. And all that. So there was, some, this, that's been many, many years ago, but we do remember that little episode. Yeah, because it went to the wall. Actually, it went. We cleaned it, and for some reason, it blocked the stoppage again, but it reversed, and somehow they had their sewer line tied into the illegal connection into the pool. It was the drain pool. Yeah. 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 pool right into the yeah, drain pool into the sanitary not supposed to. Right. Anyway, uh, if we reduce the service and uh, allow for local plumbers, we'll get into the different options in a moment. Our overtime expense is $20,000, $35,000. That could be saved. The rest of that value is then back into maintaining existing city lanes, and those lanes are the 
six eight and larger, six and eight inch mains and larger. Opportunity uh, cost in this uh, normal flushing opportunities again. We're just not out there doing what we need to be doing for the city uh, interceptor and transmission system back to the West Can you put any number on that? Um, yeah, the cost. 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 Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, be about $50,000. Yeah, the difference between that 87 and 35. Okay. Or it could be the full 87 if we use the other. Our uh, service restrictions here is during normal business hours. Again, I've said this three times. It's been out and not being able to do our mainline flushing. We normally get anywhere from four to six uh, requests a day for uh, clearing of stoppages on private property. And again, I must remind you, this is residential only. Our commercial operations, we do not clean sewer lines from the business to the main. The, they call the plumbing. So this, all I'm speaking up here is the residential. And our response time and clearing is anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Our cost for cleaning operations, again, during normal business hours is $50. After hours uh, is $140. And if you take the, uh, we can see this in a few moments, but the ordinance actually calls for you to move to uh, like a third cleaning which is, I believe is $50. The ordinance states you'll pay the $140 plus the $50. So it's $190 when they go to uh, the cleaning service. It doesn't have on the third, on the third, third case per calendar year. Our options, uh, and we'll go through each one of these, is maintain the existing service where each of the ratepayers pays a portion of this cost. And again, utilizing you have 20,000 customers, you're subsidizing those 20,000 are subsidizing. If each one has this one clean, 690 customers, you want to look at, it, look at it that way. There are probably a half a dozen of these uh, that have multiple cleanings, either second, third, or fourth clean. Uh, but again, if you relate that down, you've got about uh, a three to one ratio on here. In a year. Yes. And the reason is it's cheaper for them to call us than to go out and fix their problem. This is this is one of the concerns that we have. It's cheaper to I get two free units or I get two free cleanings, get hopefully by year, I don't have the expense of replacing the line. Are a lot of those are what percentage of those do you think are repeat customers? I want to say probably less than ten percent. That <coughs> Have us come out regularly? Regular meaning more than once in a calendar year. Only 10% of them are, are do it every year? Yes. We have some that actually know the system and will call us uh, right before Thanksgiving and right before Christmas saying they have to stop it and then go clean it so when they have family come in, they know they don't have that problem. I understand that, but how many of those, how many of those people are there? Proceeds by the people. Only 10% of those people are doing this? Yes. Okay. Well, well, we, I can check the numbers, but that's in the back of my mind. It's not, that, it's not that many people that have three people. The second item is to maintain the existing service with the customer, assuming the actual cost. Start charging as the plumbers do for our service. Take that back in as the revenue and provide funding for the program. But we still have a lot of We still have a lot of I'm sorry. You're saying that they come out. We're not having a drainage issue. I mean, I mean I've used the service before because the drainage was at the main. It was not on my property. Because my snake goes out far enough and I didn't get anything. But the thing is, is I was, if, if they're out there, the city goes out there, there's no backflow. Why are they still cleaning it anyway if there's nothing backing up? I'm just curious. I don't understand why they're doing it if there isn't a problem. They're not cleaning it. The private service line is not backing up. The backup's in the car main, getting the car main exclusive. Well, if they're calling just for regular maintenance before Thanksgiving and before whatever, maybe they haven't had well, it. They run the pipe down. We don't know until we run something down. They say it's a blockage. What happens? What can happen? 
Well, when I call them out there, there's stuff flowing out, you know. There are some stoppages that are slow. They'll call in because it's slow. It may not be a total blockage, but the toilet begins gurgling. That's or by the time we get out there, pipe could be dry. Yes. And you can see it. So we don't take that chance with the service we're running. We go ahead and run it. Okay. Whether they're trying to circumvent what we were originally trying to accomplish. That makes sense. Okay. But on that, aren't, aren't you already there to determine that it's on the front side? Because they call you when the line is stopped up. Here. And, and when I've used it, I have used it for like 10 years, but uh, it was always on the city side. It, it, was, it was a old pipes, like 30 year old pipes or whatever. And But you had to find out where it was to see where the problem was. Correct. So you're already doing the work. I think that was probably the logic that was used. It's Same thing on the water. Yeah. When there's a water line. Yeah, but then, in all the cases I had, it was the city's problem. Well, that's something that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You, you had to get to that point to determine and, where the problem was. And that's fine. We, we do that again on the water line. But once we determine that it's on the customer side of the water line, we stop. We're right. here. We but 60%, at least what the numbers were, 60% were on the city side. No, 60% were on the private side. Okay, I thought it said four. 40 is on the city side. From the right, from, and when I'm saying city side, it's from the right way to the main. Remember my comment a while ago was, we is a private single source line to the main. We, from an industry standpoint, not the city. From an industry standpoint, from the sewer, from the house to the main is the customer responsibility. But I'm not going to, you're going to, the city's not going to come in and have me tear up the street to fix the line that's up there until you know the line. But if it's found, if, it, if there is a problem and they find it, whether a plumber finds it, and we have some plumbers that go out and do this work. Sure. They, they do, some people do not call us it. If there's a problem between the right of way line and the main, the plumber or homeowner could call the city and say, we believe there's a problem there. We would respond, repair or TV it, do whatever we can do to find the problem, and then repair within the right of way. But I'm still on the hook for the plumber, even though it's the city's blockage. But the blockage is on the city, on the private owner's responsibility to the main. If the main is stopped up, you are correct. The plumber, if he goes out and there's a stoppage in the main, the city main, not on the customer side, the plumber would run the line, determine it's in the city main, and would call us. That's in the best case scenario. Right. That plumber would still have to be paid by the homeowner. Right. That's Whereas today it's not. That's correct. I, I I don't I don't get I don't get penalized for a city issue. That's correct. But if we swap, now I'm gonna have to pay to identify this only if you call the plumber. What most people do is they call the city first. Sure. Sure. They call the city first, whether it's but a what we're talking line. about is what we're talking about is moving people to call the plumber first. No. No, no not necessarily. No, no. Not necessarily. Okay. I think the difference what we're saying here is if you if you have a same just like today, if you have the situation, you call the city today, the way it is right now, you call the city. If it's not and they, the city determines it's not on the city side, but it's on your side, we don't stop there until you call a plumber. Then we flush out the residential side, the property owner's side for them. Okay. What they're talking about doing is the only thing changed is they call the city, correct me if I'm wrong, but they call the city. We would go out there and determine if it's on our side, the city side, we would fix it. If it's on the residential side, we'd say, you got a problem, you need to have somebody come fix it. If that's what they do. We're a little bit ahead of ourselves as to what we're going to do. That comes into play here in a minute. And the program that we have in place is designed for the person to actually call people that they contract with to investigate that type of thing under kind of an insurance type of approach. So hang tight and we'll, we'll get into that. I, mean, I think that's kind of basically the difference, what they're looking at, stopping to do with us doing that on us their doing, side. Yeah, on, on the residential side. Okay. And that basically that goes into uh, four and five. Four, four is basically discontinuing the existing service that we have. Where we clean private sewers and the 
just have the customer take care of that, and that would be by calling the plumber. Or number five, what Mr. King was discussing was uh, discontinuing current service to provide, provide an alternative uh, of how to clean sewer services and do it under a warranty and a cheaper program. I didn't realize the city actually came from the private side because my experience has been like Ruby's where it's always been the city side. Well, mine had to come on the private side to figure out where the problem is. Yes, my same with mine. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. You're already in it to determine. In the old. And if the water's coming up out, the, Part that's on the city, the block is just clean up to the main, to the main. wherever it might right. be. Yeah. Or it could be in the main block at the back. Yes, yeah, so and that's happened too. Right. Question and then you're just curious how are most residents aware of this service? Is it just because they call the city first or are they actually aware when they call? Oh, I got answered. <laughs> I got answered. I called the plumber several times before I found out the city service and the plumber told me. Well, it's, it's the city side, you know, they have this free service. That's why I heard about it. Okay. So, I don't know. Because I, already, I don't have a sewer connection, know so I didn't know if it was on, you know, people who have sewer connections get something in their water bill. Yeah. Yeah. No, no marketing. It's on the yeah. website. It's, it's an original some, education. Sometimes we'll just show up out there to investigate whether it's in the main, and it's not in the main, and it turns out to be in the service line. We'll just tell them, you know, we do that kind of thing. Uh, I well, didn't know if it was my ignorance because it's not having sewer. You don't have any support? I don't have city yeah, sewer. Most individuals, whether it's Louisville, I'm sure it's cities across the nation, if they have a sewer problem, they contact the city first. Okay. Most, cities, the most cities uh, around us, we have a little survey, most cities do not do what we do. Okay. And, and basically what happens is they will call in and say, I have a sewer stoppage. And at that point, that, that particular city would say, we don't perform private lines cleaning. We will go out and check the banks. And so that's generally what happens. Okay. Same thing on the water side. Correct. I keep emphasizing that, but on the water side, just to use an anecdotal story, and then my neighbor last year, the year before, has a swimming pool in her front yard. Literally. Because there was so much water in her front yard. Peak of the summer. And her response, the typical response for anybody is call the city. There's water in my front yard. I would come out, we check, it's not our main, it's not a it's not the leak at the junction of our main and the service line. It's clearly somewhere between that point and the house. She had a break in her own line. You're talking about the meter when you say junction. Yeah, basically. And so at that point we say, sorry, we're we're gone. It's it's up to the owner. And it's far more problematic actually on the water side because that water as it's running is costing a fortune. The, uh, depending on the side of the right of way that you're talking about, is that from where the water meter is? Generally, yes. Generally, because it's right at the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you talk about right of way or water meter, uh, sewage over water, excuse me, you're talking about about that. About that distance. side. Based on the sidewalk, it's usually uh, about one foot. Uh, inside the sidewalk toward the house. So that's generally the right away. We don't put the sidewalk exactly on the right away line. It's usually one foot off the right away line. Well, like Councilman Gilmer and Durham saying, I had the same problem, but it's always been past the sidewalk. Great. Uh, we'll go ahead and go this. The first option, again, is to uh, maintain the existing service. And I call this the free service. The first two items, or first two cleanings are free in the calendar year. And uh, basically, uh, some of the Concerns we have and the city has does not provide an incentive to repair. I need two free cleans. I've got a broken pipe. I've got tree roots. I've got tonka toys or ninja turtles or whatever else and stuff. So, ninja turtles in the sewer are very nice. <laughs> we found bowling balls. Uh, non payment of cleaning service results in disconnection. Uh, we do charge this on the water bill. It's added to the water bill. If you go into the third place and you don't pay it, it's just not, not paying your garbage bill to cut your water off. Uh, liability issues, again, maintain. Again, the cost is about 13%. Uh, if you take our overall budget for this operation, it's about 13% of our uh, system cleaning. Uh, city will, again, build up charges for the house and Option two, 
is to maintain the existing service, but creating a price list or charge to the customer uh, for all of the services. And uh, first uh, on that, uh, our normal business hour is NBH, kind of free day, some of the stuff. The first two cleans that were free go to $50. Like from that point, after hours, uh, holidays, nights, and weekends, again, you see the uh, 190 is the first call, all the way up to $290. The average cost that we found from free plumbers that would give us some pricing on this is about $200 for a trip to clean your sewer without video. So, 2020. Uh, basic services again. Basically, on you know, uh, basic services, uh, you just clean it. Uh, that can either be by uh, normally we use a uh, pressure system to uh, remove the stoppage, uh, and this does not include video or roof cleaning. Uh, they've got terrible roofs. We just punch through the roofs, get going again, and then they need to call a plumber to take care of the rest. Uh, same issues on the last three bullets as was in option two. Option three is expand uh, the service level. Basically, this one is, is option two, but adding a charge for video cost or roof cleaning if the customer so desires. Again, uh, if that would be the customer's choice. If you want the video, we can pinpoint uh, within a few inches of what the stoppage is. Visualize if the line is not underwater or you know, if they've got a dip in the line, I cannot tell what the uh, problem is, but generally if it's a broken pipe or tree roots, we can determine that for them and pinpoint what the problem is, which helps them in their repair when they call the pump. Option four is to discontinue the cleaning service and uh, basically like most cities, direct the uh, customer to local plumbers. Again, we do not provide names or contact for those plumbers. So we can uh, recommend they, they secure a local licensed plumber. This particular item does reduce our liability because we will not be on the property. It increases our SSO compliance or sanitary uh, sewer overflow compliance with the state because they will be responsible for any discharge that is discharged on the ground. Uh, we can uh, enforce that, but this also puts our people back out on the street doing that SO, SSO compliance uh, on our city mains. They put people out and question the mains that we need to be doing. This is our overtime and fuel, and again, put that service, uh, private service work back to the local plumbers. And again, Customer of the plumber would clear the service line to the main. Now, just on, on that option right there, is that what I was talking about earlier? If, if you want that option, that would basically, we would still go out there, <laughs> if they call us, we would still go out there and determine if it's on our side or their side. That's correct. If it's on the city side, we would fix it. If it's on their side, you're saying, we say, we're sorry, but it's on your side, we can fix it. That's that's you for the water program. That's correct. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. You can't do that unless you run something. But the plumber would determine that. You can tell the plumber will we can tell it's in the city main. You can tell? Yeah, so we go to we'll we'll go to our main. The main we'll know if it's in our main or not. If it's not in our main, then by omission or by uh, uh, uh elimination, you know it's in the service I'm just kinda of curious how they determine it because when they come to my place they go through my little port and they put that stake all the way and then they go, well oh, man, that's sixty feet or whatever. It's similar in our you know, main. But it's, it's, it's the basis, and that, they do it that way because you would call. Right. If they're you used to doing the, the private the clean out, so they're going to go there first as opposed to this where they go to our main first. Main, the manholes are generally 300 feet, and if I've got a stoppage on one side of the manhole, they'll check upstream and downstream manholes, and, and then they look at where your stoppage is. If there's a stoppage in the main, that manhole, the upstream manhole will look full. It just seems to be, will be elevated. Well, I understand what you're saying, but it just seems to be a minor case. It just happens to be my house at the T intersection where I T into the main. It seems that's where the block is really 
And when we get to this particular slide here in just a few moments, our, our next option, that's where we'll work with this alternative. So if there is a problem, we will get notice of it and we will repair anything in the right of way. I don't want the plumbers in the right of way. So we'll fix those. Question on option four. Why does it increase SSO compliance? We're not performing private sanitary sewer cleanings, which puts my people, my staff people, my maintenance people back out cleaning uh, the mains that they're required. So that 13% number earlier, you're basically freeing that time up to go back into compliance with the state? The 13% yes, is basically, uh, it's about $50,000 excluding overtime. The, Maintenance or the, we're putting people back out for those four to six hours a day out cleaning some service, uh, sewer. The 13% is reference to our overall night and uh, night uh, crew and our cleaning operation total budget. The 80,000 is 13% for Option five is a warranty program. Uh, this is the alternative that we're uh, speaking of or leading into uh, this uh, basically reduces our liability again, increases our compliance by between the mains throughout the city, not the private lines. Again, reducing over time, reduces cost to the customer. This is important from going back to that $190 average or $200 average for plumbers, in some cases, $120 is that cash? Check. Check. Thanks for giving me. Thanks. That was checked at about 10 o'clock at night. Anyway, uh, this particular is a non-mandatory program. They may use a plumber. They do not want to use a warranty program. It's a customer choice. And it's the same basic service. We have uh, worked with the uh, USP and they agree to maintain our existing service level, which is uh, perform uh, the customer site within one hour, uh, clear the stoppage, and uh, the full. Next slide, please. On the water line program, our option five is to uh, basically leave it as it is. Um, this, is this is the way it works today. And on the water line is to uh, repair those water lines by flow. This program addresses both the water and the sewer line problems that a private customer would have. So if they have a water line leak, they can use this program. If they have a sewer line leak, they can use this program. Can they opt for one or the other? Yes. Okay. Here are the, here are the rates uh, that we have negotiated. And basically, if you sign up within the first 60 days, you have that rate. And if you uh, sign up and make an annual payment, you can see the annual charge of that, and that's multiple call, uh, multiple calls that needed. And after a period of time, and Brian Davis is here with USP, he can go over this in a few moments, but basically uh, $44 a month is you know, that's less than our service fee. Per year, yeah, that one's per year, I'm sorry. <laughs> per year, per year. What this is is essentially a prepaid services or insurance type program. You're paying a certain fee. If you have any need to use the services, they come out and perform them at no additional cost. 24 hours a day? 24 hours a day. One hour response on emergency. Labor and material. contract with all the local plumbers. They will be getting this business. So they're not the way we they won't be making near the money they would be now. But they get a they get a cash drink. All all well they will contract with qualified local plumbers. Okay. Of their of their choosing. They have a have an agreement form and a, and a set of requirements that they have to meet. But if if a service line is minor thing they go up to $4,000 if they have to repair a sewer line. 
And so that cost is guaranteed, or whatever that cost is negotiated between the plumber and USP is paid to the plumber once he extends his project. Is he in one of your contracts or something like that? Yes, sir. It's month, actually, it's a month to month. Or you pay an annual to I mean, if you did approve, could I do one for five years or anything? I'm sure USP would work something out with you. Steve, one other question. I'm assuming you know on this water line program. Um, any restrictions on the length of the water line or going under driveways or no? Okay. There is, let me get for me. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is a couple of items that uh, if you're about two hundred and forty feet long. There is a couple of issues uh, that I will explain that is if you have shrubbery trees that do not replace your landscape product at that point. Next item. Uh, this is a warranty program. It's uh, one recognized by bigger cities and, and, and it's adopted or uh, approved. And also the North Central Texas Council of Governments. They have a uh, COG went out and did an RFQ. And basically, uh, USP received that uh, participation in their local agreement. Actually, the way it works is that the COG went out on the proposal. They teamed up with the National League of Cities to provide this program, uh, basically nationwide. Uh, the program itself, uh, through the National League of Cities, is administered by USP, who we have a representative from here today. So the city participates through an interlocal with the COG. COG has the master contract with the NLC and handles all the quality controls for the issues so for, for the city. So if there's a quality control issue with one of our customers, USP isn't providing fast enough service or <clears throat> complying with the terms of the agreement, we'll be dealing with that through the COG, and the COG will be dealing with that with the NLC. So, so the, the contract is between the COG and which contract? And USP. We'll no. have. We will. So have, if I got a problem. Am I going through the city, to the COG, to the NLC, to these guys? That's one way, or you can deal directly with USP. No, if I have a problem with USP, if i got to go through yeah, all these other... If you call through USP and you haven't got satisfaction, then you call us, and then we take it from there. Okay. Just because there's really a lot of layers all of a sudden. Well, it's really going directly to the NLC. Yeah. So. Uh, quick video. Yeah, yeah, that is it.